Welcome, everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Barry, along with my very good friend, the amazing Father Richard Heilman. And we have the amazing Bishop Joseph Strickland with us again tonight. This is going to be fantastic. We're going to be talking about, as you can see in the title, it is time to unite. Obviously, there's a lot happening in our country and in our world. A lot of things happening at the time we record this, during this week, and by the end of this week. So we want to address a lot of that and much, much more. But of course, Father Heilman, we always turn this over to you to lead us off in prayer. Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name amen. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Thank you, Father, and thank all of you out there who support the U.S. Grace Wars podcast. It means everything to us that your prayers, your encouragement, your comments are always coming in, always encouraging us and helping us. And we want to thank all of you for supporting us through the Patreon program. Those of you who do, you can click the link in the description below. So please continue to pray about that. And for those of you who already support us through Patreon, thank you so very much for that. I also want to encourage you to go out to brcoalition.com and check out the new Spiritual Warfare Action Training Course, SWAT for short. This is a powerful way to learn more about spiritual warfare and how we can really engage in this, put it into action, and really step it up, raise the bar when it comes to fighting the good spiritual fight. With videos from Father Heilman, myself, Dr. Dan Schneider, Jesse Romero, and many others, go on out to brcoalition.com, get yourself signed up for it. Again, it's a great way to really engage in that spiritual warfare that we all need to be taking seriously. As we all know, the times are crazy and getting crazier in different ways. And while there's a tremendous amount of hope, there is still a tremendous amount of work to do to get this message spread to as many people as possible. And we're going to talk about that tonight. And again, tonight, we're very blessed to have with us Bishop Joseph Strickland. Thank you, Bishop, for joining us. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, so Bishop, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, based on the events that we just uh, went through this weekend, of course, we're talking about an attempted assassination on a former president. Um, and just what the ramifications are that that are from that. And uh, right away, I thought, I have to get my hero on, you know, the <laughs> courageous Bishop Strickland on uh, to to talk about this, this moment in time, this moment in history that we're going through right now. Uh, horrific. Uh, a man died uh, with that mm. uh, assassination attempt. What a hero he was. He was covering his wife and children and, and took the bullet <clears throat> uh, for them. And so we want to pray uh, for repose of his soul. And this is what I want to talk about too, Bishop, is that so many people are pointing to God in this, uh, in what happened, that if his head was in turn just the right way in a centimeter, and he would have, in fact, been killed. And you see even images of Mary, you know, uh, with her finger on the bullet. It, it just, but, and then you're seeing politicians who are using the word God, using the word prayer, saying things about faith. Bishop, and, and the, the way I want to put this in context, too, is that We've gone through a period, and I keep saying it's five years. You know, we've been doing this podcast for five years. And right about the time that we started this podcast was about the time that things were erupting, I, I in my estimation, my, my view, in the world. And it felt like the volcano exploded. And I'm talking about 20, five years ago, 2019. And um, But then it, it seems like evil just uh, just waltzed in you know unabated and and the whole time and we've been talking about a lot on the podcast too the whole time i i felt like well why you know uh you know th that is, is and and you and i i think are agreement with this is that we became weak and this is where i i like to refer to president ronald reagan's great quote we maintain the peace through our strength weakness only invites aggression well I feel like that's what we've gone through, Bishop. And it was a test, right? Kind of a, a, a trial that we went through. And and during that time, Bishop, you were brave. You were courageous. You sounded the alarm bells as this was going in. Uh, sorry, but 
uh, the vast majority of spiritual leaders instead seem to be placating the radical atheists who were coming in to take charge. And so what a what a tumultuous time we've gone through. And so, Bishop, uh, it, it maybe first, if you wouldn't mind, just what's your take on what's what's gone on in recent years <clears throat> in our culture, in our church, um, to set up for this particular moment in time where maybe we're rising up, maybe this is our time uh, to awaken, to unite, uh, to, and to make America holy again. So, Bishop, what's your take on on? Do you agree with what I'm saying that you know that it's been just rapid fire from the enemy in the last few years? Absolutely, I think it's. Um, I mean, what what we have witnessed in the really, I would go back to 2018, which is six years. But what we've witnessed in the church and politically, um, I mean, Donald Trump was elected 2016. And then, um, you know, controversially, not present again 2020. Now we're in the midst of another election. Um, these are, are critical times for the nation and for the world. And I've seen people, um, I've had the chance to be in Europe just recently, and people there are concerned about the United States because in a way similar to, I believe, the role of the Catholic Church is significant. Not, it's, I mean, many non Catholics here in the Tyler area um, have expressed real concern about what Pope Francis says and does and what's going on in the Catholic Church. And so the world looks to the church as, as it should. She is the mystical body of Christ. But the world looks to the United States also. Sometimes, you know, there's great hatred sometimes for both the church and the United States. But there's also, it's like that it is a city on a hill. It's been an ideal that has inspired so many people and inspired other nations. So people of, of goodwill are not gleeful to see the United States crumbling around us that it concerns them. And I think that, so all of that has been happening over the past several years, and it's getting more and more critical. And I, I think we all, uh, you and I had the chance, I imagine Doug is pretty much on the same page with us, that this attempted assassination of Donald Trump, as, as we've both seen, we've all, all three of us have seen <clears throat> the media talking about you know, the man has been dogged and uh, persecuted and tried over and over again. And they've done everything they can to eliminate this man from the public uh, scene. <clears throat> this this um, assassination attempt seems to have really caused a shockwave to run through the world. Uh, certainly this nation, and made people begin to think, like you say, to think about God. And it was this divine intervention that saved a man, which, I mean, we've all seen the reports, a little turn of his head the other direction. And we'd be talking about when the funeral plans are for Donald Trump. Um, and I, I believe that because, and I'll just say it, the, I mean, the Republicans have just revised their platform in not positive ways, but they're still distant from the Democratic platform in many ways. I mean, the political systems of our nation are godless and broken in too many ways. And hopefully um, some of these politicians will it will be a wake-up call for them to recognize that, you know, memento mori is not just some some Latin phrase from the past, but remember death. I have an idea that Donald Trump is a changed man. And he said that his, I've already seen reports that his speech at the Republican National Convention, it's going to be a very different speech then, and I have an idea, it will be a much better speech 
not just getting into the politics and the divisions, but talking about who we are as God's people and who we are as a nation that claims to be one nation under God. So I think it is a, the, you know, the dramatic moments just keep coming in the church and in the nation and in the world. Uh, Bishop, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on or see any, I mean, maybe it's speculation, but this Republican National Convention going on, and, and this is not a political episode for us, but there is something happening on the calendar that we've got the Eucharistic Congress going on at the same time Republican Convention is going on. I'm not trying to draw any, you know, you know, lofty supernatural conclusions here, but it does seem interesting and it looks as though just like we've addressed the fact that the <clears throat> bullet just grazes the ear, misses, as you said, enough that we we're not talking about a funeral. We're talking about a resurgence of some sort of potential unity and all here and maybe a more a, a more deeply understood and emphasized movement back towards God, hopefully in the political world and elsewhere. OK, all that being said, do you see any correspondence that these two major events are happening this same week. Absolutely, Doug. Um, I mean, as three men, as we're talking, we believe that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist at every Mass. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, it we should expect that it's a significant moment when the nation as as broken as the church is and as much corruption as there is way too much that hasn't been addressed but the fact that the the nation is the catholics of the nation are in the midst of a eucharistic congress which it's been several decades since the last time that happened um if we believe that we are focusing on it as a catholic people on Jesus Christ, really present, body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist, I think we should expect that a manifestation of his power is, is going to be available to us. Maybe not things that would be called miracles or, you know, some, you know, cataclysmic sort of uh, event. But if we're talking the Lord of the universe, and honoring him, and there have already been Eucharistic processions that, from what I've seen, the clips, I think they were beautiful events around the country preparing for this. So if we're talking about the king of the universe being honored and people coming together to deepen faith that what he said is real, this bread is my body, this wine is my blood, then uh, I think... I guess the way I would say it, Doug, is what a blessing for those gathering for a political convention that it happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, good politicians, men and women, are people of prayer. There are many that aren't. But as far as I'm concerned, they're, if they don't pray, they're not connected to the real power. Jesus Christ tells us in the gospel just before he returns to the Father, all power in heaven and on earth has been granted to him as God's divine son. So people who are seeking power, and that's what the Republican National Convention is about, political power, there are good people there, there are corrupt people there with any political convention. But I would encourage the people of faith that are gathering for that Republican National Convention to really turn to the Lord, uh, whether they're Catholic believers or not, um, but to turn to the Lord. And for us as Catholics who know he's being honored in this Eucharistic Congress, to, to see the power in that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Father Heilman is talking about, to, to seize the moment, carpe diem. We yep. need to activate in every way that we can. Um, he and I were talking about getting, insisting on liturgies where it's absolutely evident that these people gathered believe something supernatural has happened. 
happening and that they're encountering God's divine son. It's not just a nice gathering of community. It's an event to celebrate God's divine son really present among us. And I think we do need to seize this moment and call people who have faith to a deeper faith. I need a deeper faith. I think we all, if you have faith, you know it needs to go deeper. That's what the saints show us. They grow deeper in faith as they continue their journey. And that's why they're canonized saints. So we need to seize this moment and encourage everyone who believes to deepen their faith, to learn their faith more deeply, to pray more, to pray and fast, uh, to be active, to activate what it means to be a Catholic and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I think it is a moment we, now, we need to seize and not let it dissipate. As you know, and as having a podcast and being in the media, the media moves on very quickly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm glad people are still talking about what happened this Saturday. And I hope it doesn't fade quickly because we need to really understand it. I mean, there, there are many questions about how, how this was handled, um, mm-hmm. not very appropriately as far as what I saw. I mean, thankfully, we have lots of video that shows that people were saying, there's somebody on a roof with a gun, do right. something. Yeah. Long but minutes before the shooting happened. And, and even to me, that shows signs of, of good, goodness of people. Um, another thing that was pointed out, nobody, I didn't hear about people burning down buildings or setting cars on fire in protest of what happened to Donald Trump. We've seen other circumstances where people were harmed in some way and people reacted in that violence. I mean, I commend the people that were there at that rally, rally a frightening moment, but I would imagine most of those people turned to prayer, and but they certainly didn't turn to violence, and they need to be commended for that. So I guess I just am absolutely agree with the the title of this podcast and with the idea that we need to awaken people to to praying harder, to fasting and prayer, to activating, to doing, to being active in our faith and believing that Jesus Christ as Lord, he's the salvation of this nation as he's the salvation of the world. And the more we know him and embrace his truth, the more powerful we are because he's got the power. Hmm. Bishop, uh, you know, as as the, this event happened on Saturday night, um, again, you're, you're just horrified in the moment again uh a hero lost his life but at the same time i i I just felt it i i just you use the term carpe diem seize the day uh that this is a moment where evil and and this is the way i've been putting it too is that evil um is always destroyed because it overplays its hand eventually and i think that's the moment we're in right now and 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 what look what it sparked faith talk you know politicians saying pray and god and faith uh in this moment uh and so but here's the word that i truly love unite we are the united states of america but we haven't been united and and you know you you hear people can't even go to family gatherings you know because they they get into you know, uh, arguments with each other. And, uh, but that's been all fostered by this, this demonic infiltration that's gone on in, for it's, it's ramped up in the last five or six years, but, but it's, it's been heading our way. But anyways, I'm asking everyone to join us. Uh, we started praying this way, uh, as the United States Grace Force, um, and we have almost 80,000 enlisted. So please, everybody, if you're not enlisted yet, please join. And that simply means you're going to get an email when we're in prayer campaigns and you'll get, um, this podcast to your email too. But 
what what are we we're in we are the united states grace force we're the supernatural warriors for god we're fighting in the heavenly realm be strong in the lord and put on the uh, uh and and in his mighty power put on the full armor of god so you can stand against the attacks of the devil but we're not fighting flesh and blood here we're fighting dark forces in the supernatural realm so the call is out and this uh, this this historical event this uh, attempted assassination and everything that it's sparking right now is just weeks away before we start our annual novena for our nation and what it is it's a 54 day rosary novena but it's more than that it, each day there's a short very short people are busy but a very <laughs> short uh training on how to become supernaturally strong okay and uh we're asking everybody please 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 join us we also uh have at the conclusion of that what we call rosary coast to coast so that's just asking people you can get your family you can get your neighbors or your parish or whatever to go someplace your park you know your church whatever and um and together we're going to pray a rosary together and believe in the power of that. Not only do we know that the the rosary is very powerful, but you imagine everybody united in prayer like that for 54 days and then in such an awesome way at the end. So you can go to rosarycoasttocoast.com, rosarycoasttocoast.com. But as I, I just wrote this this morning, Bishop, and I'd like to give your take on it, but, but here's what's at stake. I, I actually start out, there's much at stake in our nation. Powerful diabolical forces are stopping at nothing to throw everything they have at whatever is good, holy, and godly in our society. These vicious forces are doing everything possible to tear down the moral fiber of our society, uh, seeking the ruin of our souls and the souls of our loved ones. We need to respond. The only effective response is to know we need to be well-trained and well-connected to God and his supernatural power so that we can engage this battle. Bishop, uh, we, we've talked about this before, but we grew weak over, I'll call it five decades, six decades. We've lost the belief in the supernatural power of God. And I, the way I frame that in, in military terms is we dropped our weapons, we removed our armor, and now the devil can just take us out because we don't have the power that God has given us to engage the enemy, to, to, to keep this country holy as it was always. I always point to my childhood, and I got this great picture I found a few years ago, and we can maybe put it up now, but this is what faith looked like. When I was a kid, look at that church. Look at those beautiful veils on those first communicants. And 80 to 90%, this would have been in the early 60s, 80 to 90% absolutely went to church, absolutely believed in the power of God, absolutely believed in such things as grace, the power that give, is given to each of us by God. And the enemy couldn't find a way in. Okay, sure, there were pockets of evildoers. You're always going to have that in every every point in history. But those who believed in the supernatural power of God were the majority. By and large, they were the majority. Bishop, we've gone through a weakening, and it's brought this, this violent storm of evil in the last number of few years that we've, we've endured. Um, how do we recover, Bishop, that belief once again in the supernatural power of God? Sure, we're going to unite and we're going to pray, but how do we help people to truly believe that there is such a thing as supernatural strength? Well, Father, I think uh, what's occurred to me with a lot of the events and, you know, with the, the Trump um assassination attempt and, and other things going on, the things I read uh, with the church, the synod that's coming, that uh, synod on synodality, all of that. Um, what, what occurs to me is, and I think it corresponds with what you're saying, 
We need to know what we believe. We need to know it is the truth. It's not just an idea. It's not antiquated. It's not backward thinking. It is the truth. Jesus Christ is truth incarnate. Um, I think that we've, you know, grown up in a time you, you refer to that picture and the, the things that have eroded since then, it's, you know, terms like politically correct have right. developed. And, you know, I'm okay, you're okay. That was a book of psychology probably when both of us were in high school or college. Right. Um, all these things, uh, the forces in uh, society that definitely affected the church and, and certainly Vatican II was there. But they, I think in a, in a lot of ways, what I believe happened to Vatican II happened in broader ways in just in society. The, the, the doors became opened during the 60s and nefarious uh, elements seized that moment to introduce evil, to water down supernatural faith and to to really put us on the trajectory that where we find ourselves in 2024. Um, I think we've been too um, tolerant and we, you know, and it, it's not about being intolerant, but it's about not tolerating things that aren't true. Uh, we've got to not be so weak that we allow people to say things that we know are simply not the truth, whether it's about how they identify themselves individually or how they want society to develop. If it's not rooted in the truth, for one thing, and I, I think that that's another thing that this weekend reminds me of, the truth is what prevails. The truth is what lasts. The truth has a power that when it's a false message, I mean, false messages and lies have a, a, a limited power, but it doesn't, um, doesn't stand the test of time. I mean, look at history. Look at the false regimes that have developed through human history. They dissipate, they collapse, because they sometimes they started with some truth. I mean, the Roman Empire did good things because, I, because it had some good values. But as those values eroded, the Roman Empire eroded. And now it's just in the history books. It fell to dust. Anything that is doesn't stay rooted in the truth will fall to dust. That's why we believe what Christ said, the church that he established the Roman Catholic Church as imperfect, and we've seen the imperfections in our time and the corruptions, but the gates of hell will not prevail because the truth of the church will stay rooted in truth incarnate, and that is Jesus Christ. There are movements in the church even now, even as we speak, there are movements in the church to move away from supernatural faith and to deny Jesus Christ as Lord of the universe. That is not ultimately true to the church. Yeah, that you can use the word Catholic in, in institutions that are really not Catholic at all. But we've got to, it's a time to purify, it's a time to refocus on the truth. And what I think we're seeing um, in all kinds of ways is like you said, I, it, it's interesting. I, you know, we we speak the same same language, definitely. But just before you said, you know, evil overplays its hand. That's exactly what I was thinking, and I think that just seizing this moment of recognizing um, a sadly deluded individual, and we have to pray for the twenty year old man that was. Uh, that died as well. I mean, the, the heroic one who was shielding his family. But we have to pray for the one who caused all this. Uh, in God's mercy, 
his mercy is available to him as well. And and the the tragic motivations that get someone to crawl up on a roof and perpetrate a, a tragic evil crime, um, we'll never know because it seems to be the pattern. These assassins or attempted assassins, they get eliminated. So we're never able to, to, get, to gain any understanding of what was their motivation? What in the world caused him to do this? But we know it was evil. And um, I think that to me, we probably will read a lot of essays in the coming. And we need to read a lot of essays that talk about it really was this this 20 year old man gave in to an evil agenda of violence and whatever his motivation, but it was an overplay of evil that we're seeing. It's like we're, it's like God said, I'm going to intervene and give you another chance, but we need to seize this opportunity to recognize <clears throat> there is good and there is evil. And to simply quit quibbling about it and know this is true, this is false, right. we need to separate them. Right. As Christ says in the gospel, he came to divide us from the tr yep. the from everything that is false. And we need to listen to him and embrace that mission. Bishop, I'm curious if you could, uh, for the audience, myself included, for those of us who are just lay people, I shouldn't say it that way, just lay people, but <laughs> we are striving for uh, to do God's will. And with a title like this, it's time to unite and make America holy again. What does this look like on the very basic level for our Catholic families of all denominations, but in particular, your, your Catholic uh, laity out there that, okay, <laughs> we're going to Mass on Sunday, maybe some are just clocking in and clocking out. Uh, maybe some are truly devoted, and we've got, as you know, across the spectrum on that. But in general, what would you say are like marching orders for those of us who are families mm -hmm. with regards to really raising the bar in seizing this moment to really be part of making America holy again? Well, Doug, I think that's a great question. Um, and my thoughts are just tumbling as, as you even ask it. The one of the if if people listen to this and say, you know, these guys are right. We need to seize this moment. We need to raise the bar. We need to ramp up our discipleship in Jesus Christ. I would say first thing, go to confession. Mm, yep. If it's been a week, that's okay. A week is a very long, thankfully, but however long it's been, get yourself to confession. Um make a commitment to deepen your prayer life. If you're praying very little, then ramp it up um, to, to really, I mean, to just seek deeper holiness, fast and pray. Fasting, I think, you know, I mean, fasting is a popular thing these days for people who want to diet and lose some weight, but we need to re-embrace the idea of fasting as a, a powerful spiritual tool. So you know I, what I call that, Bishop, I, I, I call the fasting building your mortification muscle. So it, 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 when you fast, you're denying yourself something when you're hungry and you're making a, a decision, then it's not just food. You can deny yourself of other th things that we're talking about sin here. Uh, you're stronger in that. So Mortification, you know, die, you're dying to the self and to all the wants and and, and everything. But uh, I love, I love uh, that you're um, recommending something like that fasting. Yeah. Well, and and really, I guess a good way to summarize, because like I said, I mean, there are many different things that I could talk about. But I would say, what Christ says in the gospel: deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Those need to be very clearly, very explicitly our marching orders for this time. How do we seize this moment? By denying ourselves, certainly denying sin, finally overcoming that sin that's plagued us or 
to keep working at it at least. Deny yourself, take up your cross, do a little suffering, do a little sacrifice, maybe give to that charity that hurts a little more than you really want to, or whatever form it takes. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus Christ, the Lord of truth. I think that passage should be the, the theme of what we're talking about, because self-denial is about as unpopular yeah. as it's ever been in humanity. Right. And that's why we have all these diet schemes that are attempting to get, a, you know, to lose weight without self-denial. It doesn't happen. Right. As 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 you don't grow spiritually with without self denial, so I think the part of this ramping up is deny yourself. What does that really mean? Pray about it. Ask yourself, right. what do I need to do to deny myself? Take up my cross. Quit moaning about it and just carry it, yep. as the Lord carried His cross and follow Jesus. That means His truth and His words. Not even if it's a leader in the church, if they're saying, oh, do this, and it's not what Jesus said, do what Jesus said. The way I frame it, too, it, uh, thank you, Bishop, that's excellent. Uh, but I frame it as when you deny yourself, okay, what, what, you're, what are you doing? You're, you're making yourself more easily led, or I like to call it you're more coachable. So when God wants you to do it his way, you know, you're like... A, a military man, you're sir, yes, sir. You know, absolutely, I'll do it your way. When we're self-engrossed, okay, egocentric, no, then then we're at the whim of every little want and whatever you know pleasure that we we want, and we don't hear from God anymore. We don't even pay attention to God. We don't care about God's way, and so then the world can easily lead us. That's that's when the devil has us. Once we're detached from God and attached to the world and our wants, okay, then the devil is easily leads us. Then he can convince us of just utter lies. You know, like uh, the one that popped in my head right now is, uh, you know, a, a, a boy can be can share a locker room with a with a girl. I mean, <laughs> what's going on right now? Well, it's that we are we are not detached, okay from our worldly wants. And so we're easily, uh, and here's from Genesis, you know, the snake tricked me, right? That's what Eve said. We're easily tricked by the snake. There again, Bishop, is why I believe this moment in time, when I'm seeing people who were afraid <laughs> to use the word God are all of a sudden using it now it's like we've been given permission or marching orders, you know, to pour ourselves back into God and his way. And again, to deny ourselves. And again, that's what I think we were talking about here. And to give everything over to God. Of course, I follow your will. No big deal. No, that's what I try to tell people, too, is that once you have that conversion of heart and you turn it over to God, it's not hard. It's not hard because... You just go, of course, I want to do it God's way. Of course, there's no dilemma that you're dealing with in your mind. So, Bishop, you know, here we are again in this historical moment. And here we are with an opportunity. Uh, carpe diem, seize the day. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's one of the greatest times. And I think especially people who, get, I'll put it this way, get it. Okay, they're already tuned in. They're already se sensing you know, that they want what God wants. I think this is our time to unite at the foot of the cross. And, and, and that's, again, that's all we're saying. You know, the, the, the word that's used a lot is gaslighting nowadays, right? What do they do? They shame you. You know, they put you down. They call you extreme and you're a fanatic, right? Now I'm thinking of, this was my seminary training, we weren't offered one second of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. And if we had a devotion to the Blessed Mother, they termed us as too fanatical in our faith. Okay, no. that's what was going on in my seminary training. I had no. to rework it throughout my priesthood. But, but that's what's going on right now. 
I mean, yeah. you even have the FBI counting traditional Catholics as dangerous. Yeah. Like, why? Because the truth is dangerous. The truth Absolutely. is dangerous. Absolutely. To the world's to the world's um, uh, agenda, uh, the devil's agenda. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Bishop, how do we break free from the hold that the devil in this world has on us? Well, I think everything we've been talking about is the how-to, uh, and it's find Christ. If you know Him already, come to know Him more deeply. I mean. We're both have been priests for a good chunk of our lives. But if if we as priests now where we are say, oh, I can coast. I know Jesus. Yeah. Then you don't really know Jesus at all. Right. Because if you know Christ, you're compelled to know him more deeply. And that's the great irony of the and beauty of our faith and of our life in Christ. I mean, to deny yourself in in seeking Jesus Christ is the greatest way to flourish in abundance that is unimaginable. And that's what the saints model for us. Today, we're celebrating St. Bonaventure, Bonaventura, well done. And it, I mean, St. Francis gave him what became his name. It was really just a nickname, Bonaventure. Bon St. Bonaventure learned that in denying yourself, you flourish beyond anything You're this free. world could ever create yep. in anything you could ever imagine. And that's what we need to. That's why the truth is scary to people who want just mm -hmm. control of this world, because if people find out and know that we're not bound to this world, this is only a journey uh, a place to journey through. It's not the end all and be all of our existence. And that's threatening to people who want it to be everything because they don't know the truth. Right. Bishop, do you have any uh, prophetic vision as to where we're going from here? As you see, basically, what is your take on the trajectory of things? And obviously, a wrench gets thrown in the gears when you have an assassination attempt, as we saw over the weekend. But where do you see things going as you have experienced the persecution you've undergone, but also as you see things unfolding politically and within the church in America in particular? Where do you where do you kind of estimate it goes? Well, really, Doug, I would describe it in a way I heard someone else. Um, it. And it sounds like division, but I really believe it. it's the kind of division that Christ speaks of. That, But I see as I travel, and I've had a lot of chance to travel, that's been one of the blessings of these past several months. But I see people, and I know you hear from them all the time, they're supporters of U.S. Grace Force and all of this. Um, but people that know the truth are getting stronger. Yep. They're getting more clear. They're getting, they're, they're sort of learning to cut through the fog of, oh, well, we've all just got to, you know, pretend that anyone, anyone's opinion is just fine and all this tolerance. People are, uh, so I think there's a clarification. More and more people are coming to embrace the truth and are willing to sacrifice for that truth. Um, there's certainly still people that don't believe and that are rejecting, even within the church, rejecting the basic teachings that we know are the truth because they're of Christ. But I see, I see a, a clarification of, it's, it's like a choosing of sides. And people are choosing truth and getting stronger in that choice. But other people are true or, you know, doubling down on what isn't true. Um, but I think, I mean, ultimately, we know that the truth prevails. And so I just would encourage people that are even maybe just getting an inkling of maybe I should go back to church or maybe I need to, to pray more. We need to support them in getting back on the, the path of truth. 
But I I see that happening, that there are many very faithful people out there. They may not make the 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 news, at least the 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 big moguls of media outlets that are so liberal, but they're out there living the truth. And more and more people, I think, are are getting stronger. So we just need to do everything we can to help them be strong and and not attack anyone. I mean, that's what, like I mentioned with Saturday, you know, good people don't react to evil by attacking someone. They just grow strong. They grow, they move closer to Christ. And I think that's what we need to encourage people to do is to stay strong in the truth. The truth prevails. And it ultimately allows us to flourish in this life as families, as individuals, even in the midst of all the chaos. I mean, I know your family, Doug, I, and I'm sure that there are adversities that people are in your family are having to face, but knowing the truth draws you tighter together and to say, mm-hmm. we got to support each other. Yeah. And one family at a time, this nation needs to embrace the truth in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop, I think at the risk of uh, sounding political or at least being an accused of being political, which I believe all along I've never been, what <clears throat> what I've been is a strong defender of truth like you. And, and, uh, and so I appreciate any force that helps truth to be spoken freely. And I also stand against a tyranny that seeks to destroy truth and and um convince people uh, manipulate people into buying lies new normals as they call it and i think that's what we're dealing with right now but i say all that in the context of uh we're recording on monday night so it's the first day of the rnc convention right the uh, republican national convention and um i i've been in and out looking at it during the day but you can cut the joy with a knife and you want to say, wait, wait, wait a minute, you know, a shooter or just, uh, you know, almost killed the president. But I, I, I say that, Bishop, because I think they're feeling what we're feeling is that, OK, evil has been creeping and then forcing. And now this event very likely has united us. And th- th- that's the big word. And, and, and I think they're like little kids on Christmas morning now because unity, unity is so important. That's why we have the Catholic Church, right? And uh, um, I can remember <laughs> my last parish. I would invite, you know, the 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 gas station attendant and the, you know the supermarket clerk or whatever uh, to come because you got to experience this kind of joy. And and I, I think Bishop, when we're talking about supernatural power right? That what happens to us then? Well, we bear fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, right? The fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5. And and if people are listening right now, please, please, please just open up your heart. Well, it looks like we just lost Father Heilman. He did warn us that there were thunderstorms in his area, and I checked the radar, and yes, his neighborhood is being inundated with some pretty severe storms, it looks like right now. So We probably won't have him back for the rest of this episode, but uh, Bishop, he was talking about unity and such. Um, What are your comments regarding what uh, Father Heilman was saying before we lost him? Thanks, Doug. Um, Well, my thoughts were really, as Father Heilman was talking about, the need to embrace unity and seek unity. That's one of Christ's strongest prayers in the gospel. He prays that we may be one, and tragically, um, that we're far from that. We're far from the oneness that Christ prays for. But I think we need to be reminded, and it, it to me it, it echoes what we were talking about earlier, is truth incarnate, Jesus Christ, prays that we might be one. So where does that oneness come from? It comes from the truth. The truth is one. It's not my truth and your truth and his truth and their truth. It's one truth. It's one reality. And so seeking unity 
in in Jesus Christ, truth incarnate, is the greatest path to um, to peace, to to really human flourishing, to all the things that we wish for our families and for our communities. Um, so I think uh, with the title of this podcast that we need to remember we we have the blessing of being United States. We haven't been very united, as Father mentioned. Um, too many divisions, too much fracturing. And I think that ultimately we can all seize this moment and remind ourselves and and do some critical thinking for each of our lives. How am I not contributing to the unity and truth that flows from the sacred heart of Christ? Mm. As a sinner, I'm not doing everything I should. And there's some things probably that I should do. We have sins of omission as well. But I think we all need to do a good examination of conscience and ask ourselves, how can I be an agent of unity in Jesus Christ and take it seriously? Um, because ultimately, unity is the greatest force to overcome the evils that we're facing. Evil divides and separates and isolates. The truth brings us together in harmony with peace and flourishing. Yeah. That's what we all seek, and that's what we need to actively work for um, in this time in the nation and in the church. Yeah, I like how you emphasize unity and truth because there are those out there who say, well, unity has to do with diversity and inclusion and equity, you know, and all that we hear from call it the woke left, but it's this idea that we all have to be unified and just kind of let everybody do what they want to do. But the emphasis is, as you said several times, unity in truth, that it has to be in the truth. It makes me think of the, the, the phrase or the quote from St. Augustine, I believe that you from order, you have peace from disorder, you have chaos. And he's talking about the order of God that even in a family, uh, also, before we go, then I'd like to get your thought on this. You know, I've done a lot of construction over the years. I still do remodel work. I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's more pastime hobby now. But I remember doing sheetrock. Uh, it was a drywaller for a while. And you've got four by eight sheets of sheetrock. And you put them up on a ceiling. And you hold them with a bead of adhesive and little tiny sheetrock screws normally. Okay. It's the little things that seem to hold up the big things. And I think about all the families out there, myself and others who were thinking, well, how is me going to confession or me finding unity in my marriage or my family? How does that affect the big picture of the church and the world? But it is something that affects it. Can, can you comment on that? Because I, I really want to give people hope that your one rosary, your visit and adoration, your little daily mass moment isn't little. They really have this big, big piece of the puzzle. Can you, can you comment on that? Um, absolutely, Doug. I think that's uh, a fundamental to our understanding of what it means to be part of the body of Christ is one person living virtuously, one little um, um, sheetrock screw doing the job in heroic ways. I mean, you may not talk about the heroic sheetrock screws a lot, but <laughs> using that idea to virtuously and heroically live the truth, mm. we call that saint. Mm. And there's great power there that, I mean, look at the saints. They mm. had repercussions of goodness and power that were evident in their lifetime and beyond. And that's what we're all called to, to believe that simply one person, one man, one woman living the truth in heroic ways is world changing mm. because it is. We've got the evidence. And I think it's time for all of us to do everything we can, yeah. starting with our own lives and doing some things to get our lives in order to make some sacrifices and then to look to our family for you, your or your wife and your children and grandchildren, mm -hmm. and then to look beyond that for ways to continue to be one child of God, living the truth and believing the tremendous power that is there. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And just when we've got to have hope in that, uh, Bishop, thank you so much. This is great. Uh, again, to the audience who might uh, not understand why father is frozen over there. He, it was a great place to freeze up with what he was saying and his, his hands up, obviously in, in a spirit of unity and, <laughs> and moving forward with the truth. Uh, Bishop, can you uh, close us out with a prayer and a blessing, please? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the goodness and the beauty of your truth that is always with us, even when we face darkness and storms. We pray that we will always be full of hope and seeking the light of your Son. We pray for all of those who are suffering because of divisions, and we pray for the Trump family at this time, for the family who lost a husband and father, for the family of the perpetrator of this attempted assassination that brought great grief to his own family and to so many others. And we pray in thanksgiving for the opportunity to live the truth and freedom and peace. We ask the blessing and intercession of all the saints and especially the Queen of Saints, the Immaculate Virgin Mary. And we ask a blessing for all listeners in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Bishop Strickland. Honor to have you with us again and look forward to having you back again in the future. Okay. Thanks, Doug. God bless. <laughs> <laughs>